afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone is having a great Thursday so far. Um, we have with us our partners from Learning Upgrade. Um, they are presenting Accelerate ESL CASAS Growth with an engaging app. We have Drew Robinson and Vinod Lobo. So I'm going to turn it over to them and everyone enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Bethel. Uh, as Bethel mentioned, I'm Drew, um, joined by CEO and founder of Learning Upgrade, Vinod Lobo. Um, we're both based in Southern California, and today we'll be covering our ESL app, so how you can use the Learning Upgrade app to accelerate uh, ESL CASAS growth. And we'll be getting started uh, with a brief introduction, and that'll just kind of go over, you know, who is Learning Upgrade and what we do for those of you that are unfamiliar. Um, then we'll get into the ESL and CASAS growth. And so that'll be an introduction to how it's used in practice. You'll get a chance to hear from some instructors at sites that are deploying the program. Then we'll get into what the app actually is. And so what does it look like on the student side? Take a look at our assessment capabilities, um, the gamification, how students move through from the time they're initially assessed um, all the way up to full proficiency. We'll get into deployment models. And so for those of you that are uh, familiar with using the chat, um, feel free. I see a few of you have already introduced yourselves. Um, but if you're looking at a specific deployment model, uh, maybe you're in a, a you know blended program and you're looking at utilizing Learning Upgrade as a tool as supplemental instruction, fully remote. Those of you who are with a literacy center that want to use it to kind of amplify the the work of your tutors, uh, maybe two gen learning models, those of you that use learning circles and want to deploy it in a WhatsApp, uh, you know, virtual learning circle or in person, feel free to use the chat and just kind of talk about how you would like to use an app like this and or if you're already utilizing technology um, in the classroom or apps for your students to learn, um, let us know how you're using it or how you're hoping to use it. Uh, to use it. And then we can kind of guide some of our conversations to be targeted at your specific use cases. If you do have questions that pop up, use the Q&A for that. And Vinod and I will be able to answer those in real time. Um, chat will be more for the conversation side of things. And then to ensure that we don't lose any questions that come through, sometimes that happens when the chat is moving fast. Um, use the Q&A and that'll actually keep a log of all the questions and then we can make sure we get to those for you. And then we'll end with getting started. You know, so what does it look like to bring Learning Upgrade to your program? Um, and how do we ensure that you have a successful deployment and success on the student side? So today I'm joined by Vinod and I'm Drew. We were going to have Hanin join, um, but she was called to a, a, a Catholic Charities to work with some of their learners there. Um, so she's continuing to do the great work on site. And uh, Vinod and I will be uh, taking care of you today. So at its core at Learning Upgrade, what we're focused on really is delivering life-changing education uh, for every individual around the globe that needs it. So here in the States, that really boils down to K-12 and then our you know, traditional and non-traditional adult ed. Our focus really today is going to be on adult education programs um, that are in the community colleges, adult schools, but also those of you that are affiliated with libraries, literacy center maybe even more non-traditional like refugee programs. Uh, we'll be showing you how to take a program like ours, deploy it at your site, and improve the outcome of every single learner that you're working with. So if you were to break learning upgrade down into three parts, it's gonna be these here. So we have the student app, that's what your students will be going through. Then there's the learning management system, and that's what instructors and admin use to track and monitor progress. And then the cornerstone of what we do is to allow programs to start for free, get rapid scaling, um, start free, and then scale affordably. So the focus of today will be on the Breakthrough app, and we'll show you how we use songs, video, gamification to get learners engaged, amplifying their time on task, driving what we call binge learning. And so that's getting a ton of time late into the night, early in the morning, at their doctor's appointments, in the time that it's usually difficult to reach them or it's difficult to learn, uh, to be able to pull out their smartphone and make progress, spend time, just like they're watching Netflix episodes or you know watching uh, videos on YouTube, you know, learning upgrade is gonna be that new uh, time filler for them. 
And that's what's going to drive the 4x learning speed. So you'll see how learners accelerate their growth by using an app like ours. Then there's the learning management system. And that's going to be where the teachers, instructors, and admins track and monitor the student growth as it's happening in real time. And you'll see there what's important is we have a 50 to 1 staff ratio, and that's going to be on the minimum side. So what's cool here is a lot of programs tend to be very labor intensive for the instructor. There's a lot of training. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of work that needs to be done in order to get up to speed and deploy programs. So we spend a lot of time and work hard to make sure that's not the case. We want to make things as simple as possible, but still as powerful as you need so that you can very quickly get your students onboarded, have them take the assessment and begin their self-paced learning journey. And you can sit back and just do the reports and make sure that things are going as they should uh, with minimal work on your side. And then at the very end, we'll talk about how you can scale this up, you know, bring it to every student at your site or in your classroom and uh, take it from there. So a little bit about us. We've served over 3 million students now. Um, and then for the validation side of things, we're grand prize winners of the Adult Literacy X Prize. Uh, so that's the largest field test that was ever done in adult TED, 12,000 learners. And they use CASAS as the pre and post test there. And these were all low literate adults. So a CASAS score of 210 or below. And at the end of this uh, you know, large field test study, uh, we were the grand prize winner for getting the highest gains um, on that CASAS uh, post test. It's a fantastic global solution for all ages. And so when we talk all ages, a lot of times people think, oh, super young, you know, K-12 and adult, fantastic. But what we find with Learning Upgrade is we work in libraries where we have uh, senior citizens that have, you know, had a difficult time accessing other programs. Sometimes the technology, the training, uh, getting them logged into a computer for the first time is a challenge, but they find Learning Upgrade is a fantastic solution, whether the the learners are in their 20s or if the learners are in their 70s. It's intuitive. It doesn't require training. All of the gestures are going to be, um, you know, usually pretty natural for anybody that's been using a smartphone. And so it's a great solution for anybody at your program. Um, it's not just language acquisition. So when we talk ESL, there's some really cool language acquisition programs like Duolingo, Rosetta Stone, Babbel. Fantastic if you need to learn a few phrases, some vocabulary. But if you want federal standards, you know, prepare somebody for a classroom setting, academic English, credit bearing courses, uh, you need a standards based program. And that's what we're going to provide for you. It's available on any web enabled device. So we're going to use the term learning upgrade app, but you can use it in a browser as well. So if you have Chromebooks, uh, laptop cards, if you have some kind of a computer lab with desktops, fantastic learners can use their credentials to log in there then they can use their smartphone or tablet at home to pick up right where they left off. And with the learning management system, you can track and monitor all that progress. So today the focus is gonna be on our English, so our ESL track, but we do have math and that'll take individuals from basic numeracy. So, you know, first exposure to the number line, one, two, three, all the way up to algebra and then getting them ready for HSD. So we have a GED math prep course so again, we can take them on their pretest, put them somewhere in our course line, get them ready. We also have digital literacy, financial literacy, work life skills, and then citizenship for those that are pursuing naturalization. And all of these courses are available for every single one of our students. And so we don't break things up. We don't restrict things. Any single learner that comes to us wanting to improve their learning outcome is going to have access to all of these fantastic courses. So here's a look at our most recent deployments. So you'll see most of them are centered in the US, but we also support a large group of refugees globally. And that's one of the things we're hearing from, from many of our programs. You know, the conversations we're having, especially in the early, you know, you know, part of this year, but really over the last three to four months, when we talk ESL, most of our programs are saying, we have more refugees that we're supporting than we've ever had. And so, in some places, we don't have the translators. In some places, we don't have the resources. In some places, uh, we just don't have the bandwidth. And so what Learning Upgrade is going to allow you to do is it doesn't matter where your learners are coming from. It doesn't matter what their first language is. We're going to provide them with a tool where they can quickly get onboarded. Uh, we have documentation for onboarding in their first language. They'll get assessed, and then we can very quickly improve their English and math 
to get them ready for your, your uh, you know, traditional classroom setting, or if you have vocational training, job training, learning upgrade is going to be that on-ramp for them. Uh, that's going to be non-intimidating. It's going to be something that they're familiar with. So we do onboarding with WhatsApp, which is what every single one of them is using every day for communication. Uh, so for those of you that are, you know, maybe supporting a new refugee group, new arrivals, um, you've come to the right presentation um, and we'll be teaching you how to utilize our tool to really support and serve all of those in your community. So before we get started, we'd like to talk about a few stories. So we'll talk about at the individual level and then we'll talk about um, at the classroom level and we'll go through a few different use cases and deployments. So here's Sudio, uh, she was a new arrival with her family, a uh, young mom with seven kids. The kids came to uh, San Diego. So this is UMI Learning Center in, in San Diego. And you know we're struggling in the classroom. You can imagine how difficult it is uh, when you arrive to a new country, uh, you know, instruction in the classroom is in a language you're not familiar with. And in this case, and in many cases with some of our refugees, they're going to be non-literate in their first language. So they can speak their first language, but they can't read or write their first language. And so that's a real challenge. You know, a lot of the times in Southern California, we work with new arrivals from Central America and as Spanish speakers, they tend to be literate in Spanish. In almost every case, they can read and write Spanish. So it's, it's not as, as hard of a lift. You know, we have closed captioning in Spanish. We have all of our onboarding and they tend to get started with learning upgrade and start flying. Where a lot of programs come to us is they say, listen, we've tried a lot of different solutions. We've tried everything at our disposal and nothing works. Please let us give learning upgrade a try. Let's see how it goes. So with UMI Learning Center, we did this with, with a number of students and it went so well um, that they ended up expanding access to everybody. And the reason for that is the individualized way it works is Studio is able to log in and it's not an intimidating thing where I'm in this classroom or I'm using this book and everybody else is using that book. Everybody just has learning upgrade. And so Studio has learning upgrade. Other you know, peers in the learning circle at the site is, are using learning upgrade. Her kids are using learning upgrade. And there's no comparison of, oh, I'm here and you're there. They're all working at their own pace and getting the instruction that they need for where they are in their current learning journey. So Studio 7 Kids got started. She saw how much it was working for them. And then she got started and absolutely took off. And she was able to complete all of our courses in an 18 month period. And this is a journey that would have traditionally taken more than five years in adult education. And this acceleration, she was able to get into credit bearing courses at a local community college in a year and a half. So, you know, number one, how was she able to do this? Well, with seven kids, time is time is very difficult. You know, I have one kid and I know how, how much of a challenge it can be. She's able to do this after 10 o'clock. So you put the kids to bed, you're working. You're at the doctor's office, you're working. So that's one. Number two is we remove a lot of the hurdles of instruction. So transportation can be one of those. Cost is another. And then the third one can be cultural, you know, showing up to in-person classes versus online. So learning upgrade is a, is a tool that really helps level that playing field. And it can be a fantastic option for learners um, that need to be able to work on their own time uh, when it fits Hello, into their schedule. Hello, my name is Shadia Mahmoud. I teach ESL here um, at OMI Learning Center. What's very amazing about this program is it really helps them love to learn. It just makes it fun and just more enjoyable. I think it's a great addition to, to add into our program. We have seen tremendous improvements. Um, they started from basically doing the alphabets to now where they're reading paragraphs and um, reading sentence and completed sentence. So that's pretty, um, amazing. So there you got to hear a little bit about one of the students at UMI and then from one of the instructors. That's at the individual side. Um, now another one for the larger deployments, um, supporting refugees that were recently displaced in Afghanistan. Um, so with the Taliban taking back over, there's a large number of Afghan uh, refugees that are now in uh, multiple countries. So Focus Humanitarian Assistance supports refugees in countries all over the globe. 
And they came to us and said, listen, you know, our traditional pathways to education and vocational training for our learners aren't scaling. It's too expensive, uh, you know, with this larger group. And they actually started this at the tail end of COVID as well. So they couldn't travel. They couldn't put individuals um, on site. And so they were looking for a program that was affordable, scalable, and easy to use. So we're now in use in nine countries. We started just in one in Turkey. We translated all of our documentation into Dari, and we sent that out to a small group. Our, our goal was to recruit anywhere from 50 to 100 students for the first pilot. They shared it to all their friends and family, and we ended up with a pilot of 800 students that quickly grew to 2,000. And what was incredible here is this was done all volunteers in Canada supporting you know, what turned into 2,000 students in Turkey. The other important thing that really helped this case is this is really where we started to develop our WhatsApp learning circles model. And so with this, the groups in WhatsApp, the chat groups were built out around the students pretest. And so if they were, um, you know, a CASAS, uh, you know, below 180, they would be in one group. And the reason that was critical is then the person, you know, leading that learning circle, the instructor would be a Dari speaker. As we get up to the higher scores, you know, 220 and up, um, then we could have an English speaker managing those groups and really just facilitating conversation amongst the students. As the students work through learning upgrade, those that ended up completing our entire English track, then they became the WhatsApp group leaders for the next cohort or the next quarter uh, of, of learning for the students. And those were our high flyer students. But you can see here, they logged 44,000 hours in a six month period and earned over 12,000 certificates. So we'll get into that a little bit, you know, what is a certificate, but in short, it's a full learning upgrade course that covers a full grade level of academic content. And you can see here what the growth looked like. So I was mentioning, you know, this pre-A1 uh, costs us 180 or below, made up 92.3% of all of their learners. So 800 refugees, which makes sense. First exposure to academic English, but then you can see after a six month period of using learning upgrade, that pre A1 is down to 16%. And those are the ones that, you know, for whatever reason, weren't able to access the courses. Uh, life of a refugee is not easy. Some of them instantly went into work, had to move around. For those that did use it though, you can see here the basic A1 and A2, how quickly in six months you're able to go from a CASAS equivalent of 180 into that 180 to 210. And then most importantly is our uh, Sefer B1, B2 into this independent group. Now you're above 210. And so you're into independent and you're on your way. So this is something that we're able to do, again, fully remote with refugees, first exposure to academic English. When we're working with traditional adult education providers here in the Hi, States, my name is um, in blended learning, I'm... we find that's even uh, quicker. So what I'll do is I'll go back, we'll play the video and you can hear from a student, and then we'll talk about our deployment at Sweetwater Adult Ed. Hi, my name is Sabiba Jama. I'm here at Umi Learning Center, and I increase a lot of uh, learning things in Learning Upgrade. Somehow Learning Upgrade is the best thing that I should recommend for the people, for the moms outside, and I will recommend people that should, they should go and it's just like easy things to do and you can do whenever you have a free time. And you can do like when you are in the hospital waiting the doctor or you can do when you are waiting the cashier at the Walmart or anywhere you are. Or if you're washing a clothes at the laundry, you can do it whenever you have a free time. It's easy and it's understandable. And somehow it will tell you all the vocabularies and something like new words that you don't understand and the word that you can't even pronounce. It will help you to pronounce and it will help you to spell right. And it's good. I like learning upgrade and I also do every single day, even like five minutes. I like to do it before I used to play video game, but now my video game is learning upgrade. And I can read right now, and before I wasn't understanding the new words and pronunciation, but whenever it pronounced me, I like it. And also, I was weak with math, one plus one is kindergarten can do it, but I wasn't doing it. Right now I can do up to 10. So that helped me a lot. 
I like it and I should recommend a lot of people for so that's why I like it and I am in math right now like, um, it's course two which is I finished course one I get silver certificate which I'm proud of myself <laughs> and also I did English which is and now I'm doing an English two which I finished it I have one bronze certificate and I am so proud of myself I should recommend a lot I, my name Okay, so you got to hear from a student, a uh, refugee student from one of the programs we work with. And so now we'll talk about more traditional adult ed. So this is at Sweetwater Adult Ed in uh, San Diego area, four campuses, 20 offsite locations, and they serve over 25,000 adult learners. And this is one of the first groups we started piloting the app with. So before the app, uh, it was a, a desktop or laptop based program um, that could be used in the browser. And there we would see students would, would get usually 60 to 90 minutes a week, which makes sense. You know, if you have a computer lab open, you can get a half an hour or three times a week. The second we opened up access on the smartphone where students can learn at any time, whenever it fits into their schedule, we saw their, their classroom groups go up to four hours a week. But most importantly, in the 10 week periods that we were running our tests, the classes were averaging 7.8 um, points gained on CASAS, which is huge. Um, with a high there of 16 in the 10 week period. So it just accelerates their progress when they can improve and increase their time on task. And then we even had some students in a four month period go through all of our English courses, so 300 full lessons and get up to full proficiency. Hi, my name so is- Here I'll play a brief video and you can hear from uh, the lead instructor there, the ESL instructor, as well as hear from some of the students uh, that use Learning Upgrade. Lisa Sharman, and I am an ESL instructor for Sweetwater Adult Education in Chula Vista, California. I teach at an elementary campus, parents of students that attend the elementary school. So after attending the Learning Upgrade workshop, I quickly went back to class and shared what this app that I um, really liked and enjoyed when I went to the in-service. I asked the students to, um, if they had a smartphone, to get their phone out and um, download the app from the store. And it's free, so they were very excited about that. I am Abril Parra, and um, using a lear learning app tree. Uh, sometimes I use it while, while, while wait for for my doctor's appointment, my dentist's appointment, and sometimes I use it in the evening when my child are working in his homework. Um, and basically I'm right now in the 51 exercise, and I really like it. I really, it, I think it, it's, it helps you a lot. Uh, for me, it helps me for the nouns, because I was kind of having trouble with that, and I think it's, it's very helpful. I'm using an other place uh, with the, um, the same bus. Um, I'm learning, I'm studying the bus. Um, for me, it's very practical because I don't need books, I don't need pencil, and only my phone, and I'm studying. El, el programa de Learning Off es muy bueno para mí. Um, Siento que estoy aprendiendo mucho. Um, uh, me gusta porque es muy fácil de estudiar. Uh, lo estudio como voy mucho al doctor con mi niño. Um, estudio mucho en el, en el espacio de que él está con el doctor. O cuando vengo en el bus, este, vengo estudiando. Es fácil de entrar, lo traigo en mi teléfono. La música y los sonidos son muy buenos. Uh, a mí me gusta mucho porque te motiva, te motiva a seguir, a seguir y estás, o sea, moviéndote, pero a la vez estás aprendiendo y, y este, y escuchando, aprendiendo y moviéndote, o sea, es muy bueno. All right, so now that we've gotten a chance to, to hear some personal stories from Studio, uh, see the group story of refugees from Focus, and then uh, more traditional adult ed at Sweetwater, um, you know, let's talk about the app that the students are using. So that'll be the focus now, is taking a look at the courses, uh, the sequencing, the lessons, the alignments, and how things work on that side. So here you can get a look at our Learning Upgrade app screen of courses. Uh, the very first time your students log in, 
they actually won't see all the courses. They'll see their placement test and they'll push a single button. So we make it very simple, which is critical for our ESL students. You don't want a lot of text on the screen. You don't want uh, multiple steps to get between them uh, in their login and their first access to the content. Uh, so it's just one button. They click on placement. Uh, they'll be assessed in English and or math. And then our app will enroll them in the appropriate course. The nice thing is you'll get a fantastic report that'll break down not only the course that they were placed in, but how they performed across the multiple English domains. So you can see where their strengths and areas of need are instantly. And then most importantly, as they work through learning upgrade in a blended model, as they sit through your class and go through your instruction, how all of that combines to improve their scores as they make their way through their English ESL courses. Each one of these courses is 60 lessons, and we'll take a look at a lesson screen in a bit. One through 59 are gonna be self-paced. Learners can take as much time as they need, take notes, uh, you know, pause things. Every single one of those lessons starts out with a uh, instruction. So you can view that as the instruction for the course. Then comes the learning upgrade magic. So we take the instruction and we turn it into a song. So they get the song, helps them remember it, keeps them excited, keeps them logging in. Then comes the gamification where they take what they learned and they get to practice it. And it scales up. So they're gonna start out with some simple, uh, you know, let's just get some confidence and some momentum and then build all the way up. They need to get 100 points per lesson. 75% will be a bronze, 90 is a silver, 95 is a gold. And then once they get to lesson 60, that's what we call the final challenge. That'll be the only timed component in a full course. And then once they finish all 60, that's when they'll earn a certificate. So you heard about Habiba Jama in her video talking about how proud she was with the bronze, silver, or gold certificates. And they'll see the certificate here. So in this demo, it's all gold and they get a chance to see exactly what that looks like. Uh, English math, you know, that'll be automatic. So if they, you know, let's say they finish English upgrade one, nothing you have to do on your side, it'll automatically place them in English upgrade two, and the students will be able to work through uh, one at a time. So here we have a closer look. And, you know, one of the things that makes learning upgrades special, you know, especially when you're comparing it to other options, is every single one of these courses, we're gonna record over 10,000 pieces of audio, and that's gonna provide the students with instant feedback and remediation. So if in the gamification part of it, if they do get a question incorrect, you know, it's not like a workbook where you get the, the answers for odd questions in the back of the book, um, or maybe you do get the answers, but no real explanation or process as to how they uh, got that. Uh, with Learning Upgrade, it's like a teacher or a tutor built in. So if they do get an answer incorrect, we're gonna walk them through every step of the way through narration. We're gonna show them the formulas. We have arrows, we have color call outs, we have drag and drops, and so that they can really visualize how to answer a question. And then we can scale it back like a workbook can't do and provide them with some scaling questions to build up their skills and confidence until they can get back to the place where they can answer it correctly. So with all of our courses, I'm actually gonna have the node come on and kind of talk about the sequence. And so you know, when, when ESL instructors or students go through, you know, what is English basic? And then all the way up to our newest course, which is English Upgrade 6. So for those of you that have used Learning Upgrade in the past, you know, you've had your students go through English Upgrade 5. And English Upgrade 6 is our newest course that's coming out in about a month. And that's going to continue to build on the strong courses that we have. So I'll have a note come on and just kind of talk about what that sequence looked like all the way from basic um, up through English Upgrade 6 now. Thank you, Drew. Um, thank you, Drew. Uh, on English B, um, where we're just starting out, English B is for your students who are uh, testing at the very basic. So they're students who need to learn the alphabet, who need to learn letters and letter sounds, and the beginning of decoding, for example, CVC words, ka, at, ta, cat. So it's a very basic course. Um, then we go to English one, which is where a lot of students start, uh, ESL students. Um, this will go through all of the letter sounds, quickly go through the alphabet, but get all the way through sentence comprehension, some short passages. Uh, once we get to English two and three, we're starting to learn more complicated sight words. We're doing a lot of listening exercises 
some speaking uh, uh, instruction, and a lot of writing, grammar, uh, writing sentences, starting to write passages. So uh, once we get to English four and five, much more advanced, you're starting to read uh, science and social studies passages and poetry and plays, you're starting to get much more advanced grammar and writing. And then we're really excited about English six. This is our brand new course. We've been working on it for a couple of years now. And this course takes you all the way to GED level. So this course, for example, includes a lot of listening exercises where you have to listen to quite a, a long and sophisticated passage, many minutes long, without being able to read it and you have to understand it. We also have visual literacy, so science diagrams, charts, graphs, tables, um, and we also have a lot of more sophisticated, higher level science and social studies content. So English 6 kind of prepares you for uh, the GED or for uh, vocational training in college classes. So uh, yeah, that's the full sequence It's 360 lessons total. And each one of those courses is about 25 hours of work. Perfect. Thank you, Vinod. And so, yeah, so now transitioning from the courses, we'll take a quick look at what a course actually looks like. So this is English Upgrade 5. And you'll see similar to when we look at the courses, you know, once they take the assessment, it's important that we show them their, their entire journey. And so just like, you know, if you're going to start a new Netflix series, you want to make sure that there's multiple seasons before you get invested. It's important for our learners to see this psychologically. It's like, if I'm starting out at English Basic or English 1, if I stick with it, I can see the entire pathway up through English 6. Same thing with math. Even for the skills and the test prep, you know, when I do get to that HSE level, I don't have to switch apps. I don't have to switch paths. If I stick with the app, everything is here in one program for me. And then we also like to lay things out visually um, for the course map, you know, so that they can see, okay, I'm starting at one. These are all the lessons I'm going to work through. And at the end, this is the subject area that I'll have mastered. So it's really key. They can also see how they performed on each one of the lessons. So in this case, it's all gold but they'll also get a chance to see those bronze and those silvers. Now, if they do score below 75%, it'll be red, and that'll be the case where they need to repeat a lesson to mastery, or at least above 75% to move on. As the teacher, you can always override that if you want students to be able to jump around, you know, that'll be up to you. But by default, they'll need to get a 75% uh, to move from one to the next. So here's a look at a little bit of the instruction, top right and bottom left. Again, when students are, are learning on their own, self-paced, uh, you know, working in an app, we bring everything to life. So it's not like a workbook where it's static. We can do arrows, we can do color callouts, drag and drop, highlight coefficients, highlight passages in a paragraph, zoom in, um, really, really do a great job of, of feeling like they're working with a personal instructor in the app. And then in the bottom right comes the gamification. So in this case, they'd be doing volume of a rectangular prism. You can see they can drag and drop unit cubes into the rectangular prism. Um, they'll drag and drop numbers into the formula. Here, everything is green, so they're dragging and dropping numbers. And then in this case, it's incorrect when they hit go. So instantly, they're going to see in red that it is incorrect. But most importantly, the voice comes on, the narrator comes on. It'll show them the formula. It'll use arrows to show them where the numbers are coming from, and then can scale it back to an easier one. And it is aligned to the standards. Um, so for those of you that are interested in, in doing a deep dive on the standards, uh, we can share a link to our courses page. And on the courses page, there'll be buttons with links for everything. So we have full lesson lists, we have uh, CCRS alignments, CASAS alignments, um, any alignment that you'd like to see. Um, we have PDFs that you can download and see all of those. And then when we talk about, you know, targeting time on task and setting goals for our students, you know, what does that look like? So for students that might be, you know, a couple, you know, levels behind where you'd like them to be, um, or maybe they're, they're, you know, already beginning their HSE journey, they've taken some of the components of the, you know, GED test, and maybe they're a few points from passing. In those cases, you know, we can say, hey, well, one hour a week is gonna be plenty. You know, all you really need is one course, in six months to get to where you need to be. For others that might be you know, just beginning their learning journey, someone that's starting out on English Basic or English One, that might be the case where if they do have a goal 
of being fully proficient in six months, nine months, 12 months, they have a pathway. It's going to take time, no doubt about it. But if they can get four plus hours a week, you can see how quickly they'll start to advance through our courses and get themselves pre prepared. So if they want to see it all visually, we put everything on a line here. And so you can see how critical it is to, you know, partner and look some research from some of the government agencies on how literacy scores and literacy levels impact earning in the short term. So in, you know, the time today, and then also long term and also, you know, being able to retain employment, uh, advancement within an organization, and then also the income of individuals in the family. So children and uh, other other relatives of how, you know, the head of the household, you know, their education level can directly impact the earning of those around them. So it's critical here that we provide a pathway where they can not only, you know, do English, but also all of our other courses. So for our ESL st students and ESL beginner, they'll take the placement and they're going to place somewhere in this basic or one. And then you can see how much time it takes to move up. As Vinod mentioned, it's about 25 hours per course. And so if you're looking at all this, you tell somebody, oh, you know, that's going to be 150 to 200 hours. It might sound like a lot. But then if you ask people how much time they spend on their smartphones, and most of our phones now actually track the amount of time we spend, almost everybody is spending 30 to 60 minutes on their phones a day, guaranteed. And a lot are spending a lot more than that. You'd be surprised some people two, three, maybe even four hours on their phones. And a lot of it is not spent uh, on, on things that are gonna be beneficial long-term. So with Learning Upgrade, we're not asking them to replace all their smartphone time with learning, but if they can just replace a part of it, you know, how quickly they can advance. So even if they were going from basic and wanting to go all the way through our, you know, full course sequence, if they could just dedicate an hour a day for a year, they could go through everything. And obviously that's not possible for all students, maybe not even necessary, but if they can just dedicate 30 minutes, maybe three or four times a week, you can see how quickly those blocks of learning add up. They can get through basic up to English upgrade five, and then this English proficiency, when our English upgrade six comes out next month, you know, that'll be done in tandem. Uh, same thing with our GED, so our HSE prep. And then what we find is, you know, why do we jump from English six or five up to math five right away? We find that most of our students don't need math basic through four. Some do, no doubt about it. But the big reason students struggle in math upgrade four and five is the English proficiency required there is much higher. So you have a lot of word problems, a lot of compare and contrast, a lot of instruction you have to read. And we find that when our ESL students reach proficiency in English, that there's a jump in their math scores as well. And so now they're able to jump into a math five or six, maybe our pre-algebra upgrade and get themselves ready for GED. Once they've done that, then we have our fantastic digital literacy, work life skills, financial literacy, and as I mentioned, our citizenship for those that are pursuing naturalization. And everything is available in one app, um, one sequence, uh, feels completely seamless, one set of credentials, and you'll be able to track and monitor their progress through the entire journey. And that takes us to the learning management system. So, you know, what does the tracking and monitoring look like? What does student onboarding look like? So today is really just meant to be an introduction to our LMS tools. Uh, for those of you that would like to get started with Learning Upgrade, or maybe you're already using it, we're going to put a link in the chat that you'll be able to click and fill out, and it'll just be a simple pilot form. Um, our pilots are completely unlocked, so you can have as many instructors at your site, as many students as you'd like to serve, get started. Um, you'll have access to all of our courses, so it's just like any of our full licenses, unrestricted, um, for you to get a good feel of the program and see if it'll be a good fit um, for your students. And then we also include training. So you'll fill out that form and we'll provide you with your credentials. Uh, we also provide you with a getting started guide. And so most of our instructors uh, that use programs like Learning Upgrade or had access to learning management system find it super easy to get started and they're able to self-start in five, 10 minutes. For those of you that might have a little more of a complicated uh, you know, group of students, larger groups of students, we're more than happy to provide uh, no cost training. So we can just set up a Zoom session. You can let me know what you'd like to cover, maybe what your needs are for the program, and we can get things dialed in perfectly for what you're doing. 
So at its core, we try to keep things as simple as possible, um, but still give you as much power as you need for the reporting side. So for the teachers, we make things as straightforward as possible, tile-based classes to organize your groups of students, time periods, uh, regardless of what kind of school you're working at. And then in our reports tab, we have nice dashboards for quick insights and then detailed reports uh, when you wanna drill down and get a little more detail. So here we'll cover some of the most popular ones. So here at the top left is what we call our student monitor. So you'll see a lot of tiles there, a lot of color, can be confusing at first when you see it on the first glance, but once you look at it with your own students, um, it becomes really clear. So each one of these rows is gonna be a course. And you'll see here, there are 60 columns. And so that just represents the 60 lessons within the learning upgrade courses. So if students are working on English upgrade one for the first row, uh, you'll see one tile per lesson. And then this is gonna show you their score. So if you see the bronze, 75%, you'll see silver at 90, and then most of these are gold, so that means they got 95% or better. For training purposes, we usually tell teachers, just look for the red. You know, red means they didn't get 75% or better. So you can hover over those tiles and you'll see the name of the lesson. So if it's a tutor-based program, maybe at a library or a literacy center, perfect opportunity to focus my lesson there. If I'm a teacher, I can see where my students are struggling and uh, you know, intervene if necessary, or watch the students as they repeat those lessons to mastery and improve their scores. Below this, we have our NRS growth report. And so this is a really powerful one because we're taking in what the students did in their initial assessment. So we're gonna give you their initial placement in this first column. You can see exactly where they're beginning their journey based on NRS scores. And then as they progress, you're gonna get a chance to see how they're growing. And this is gonna be based on time parameters that you set um, or the default. So by default, we're looking back at a full year. We wanna see a year of growth, but if you wanna look at quarterly or you know, semester, whatever it is, you can alter the dates and you can see exactly how much growth is occurring given a certain time period. And the whole thing's color coordinated so you can uh, you know, get quick insights at a glance. So that's gonna be for the overall English. And then we're also breaking it down by domain areas. So you can see their growth on the reading fundamentals. You can see it for comprehension, vocab spelling, grammar, their writing skills, and also their listening and speaking. So it's not just enough to show you what it looks like for their overall English. We want to break things down by domain area so we can really see for our ESL students, uh, you know, where they might need a little more work um, or where we can celebrate their success. Now, as they complete their full learning upgrade courses, we have certificate reports. So you heard some of those students in the videos talking about um, you know, how much it means to them to complete a course, that full grade level of content. So we wanna make sure it's easy for you to help them celebrate. So with the certificate report, it's nice because number one, you can see who's completed courses, which courses they've completed, and if they're bronze, silver, or gold. And then you can also quickly print those out or export those. The very bottom, um, that's gonna be a student report card. So we have report cards that'll show you aggregate data, all the courses they're working on, the amount of time they're spending in learning upgrade, but then also those domain area growth scores you saw for NRS, we're gonna give you just overall scores for the individual students on each one of their report cards. So you'll get a chance to see exactly where their English level is, but more importantly, what their domain area scores are with percentages. So you can see how, uh, you know, where they sit currently. One of the questions in the Q&A was talking about in-class instruction. And so Vinod answered that, uh, that we have a teacher whiteboard. So you can see here built into the LMS and also on the laptop here, this tab says teacher whiteboard. So if you click on that, you can launch uh, what we call our teacher whiteboard, but you can think of it as an unlocked version of everything that we have. So every single one of our courses, every module, every component is at your fingertips and you can utilize that however you see fit. So some of our programs will use it for in-class instruction. So in a blended setting, maybe you'll use the learning upgrade songs and instruction to kick off one of your lessons. It's a nice little two minute video and it helps introduce the content before you start, uh, before you start your lesson. Um, for others, you know, maybe if you're a tutor um, or for some of our refugee programs, they have a lot of volunteers that are non-credentialed educators. 
they can actually use the teacher whiteboard for instruction to kind of guide what they're doing. So we leave that up to you, um, but it is a tool available um, and at your disposal. Below there, we have our activity log report. So we have fantastic reports that'll show you session logs if you wanna look at for an individual student or for your entire program or class. And this will let you know every lesson they're working on. You'll get timestamps for every time they start and end a lesson, their score, the amount of time they spend, and then also the devices that they're using. So this is a fantastic report for a lot of states that require this level of documentation for funding. And then in addition to this one, uh, if you're one of those programs that needs to track in class versus out of class time, that's something we can turn on. And then every time your students uh, log into the app, we'll ask them, uh, you know, are you in class or out of class? And then we'll be able to give you a report to show you how much time each student and your group is spending. And I see Florencia um, raised her hand with a question. If it would be possible, if you could add, add your question to the Q&A, um, and then we'll be able to address that um, in person. Um, but I do see your hand raised, Florencia. And so yeah, if you could use the Q&A, uh, we'd be more than happy to get your uh, question answered here. So the last thing we'll cover is uh, will be best practices. And so this is gonna cover those deployment models. So when we look at, you know, how do we improve the student, you know, scores, ESL level, NRS level, CASA scores, it really boils down to setting a timeline and starting with a plan. So you'll see here the very first thing that we talk about is training. So the first component of training is on the teacher side. It's that, you know, what is learning upgrade and how do we get started with it? So first component is here. For those of you that would like to get started with a pilot, we also provide follow-up training if you have additional questions. So that'll be in the first month. So that's going to be, you know, second half of February. We'll get started here. Our focus in that training and our correspondence will be on student account creation. So that's the student onboarding. So with student onboarding, we have two primary options. The option that most of our programs go with is gonna be spreadsheet-based enrollment. So we provide you with a template. You provide the students' names, their, uh, you know, their grade level, if they're not gonna just be uh, you know, standard adults. Um, you can also provide us with their first language. And then if you have their contact information, so that would be their phone number. Uh, usually that's the same as the WhatsApp number, but if not, we have a field for WhatsApp number and then also their email. And then what we can do is we can do a push notification and provide them with their credentials. So again, we know that with almost all of our ESL students, they're using WhatsApp daily. So we wanna meet them where they already are currently. And the key there is to be able to do push notifications. We know they're gonna get their credentials, we're not asking them to sign up for Remind or signed up uh, you know, for some other program. We also know that very few of them have email addresses. And for the ones that do have email addresses, they're not checking them as regularly as we might. And so WhatsApp, we know they're getting the notifications in real time. They're checking it all the time. And it just really helps for a successful deployment. And then we can go ahead and set up uh, groups and learning circles with WhatsApp uh, to ensure that they have the sense of community and then also the peer support um, as they work through learning upgrade. So that's the first step, student onboarding in the training. From there, we get into the student learning. So the student logs in for the first time. They're going to take that very quick assessment and then the app will enroll them in the appropriate course and they'll begin their journey of accelerated student growth. Now on the instructor or the admin side, you're going to be in the program evaluation so you're gonna start out, of course, with the training, and then in month two, that's where you can track and monitor student progress in real time. You, know, you get to see all of this accelerated growth. At the end of the pilot period, we can evaluate growth. Um, we can get the qualitative measures. You know, How are the students enjoying the program? Are they feeling more confident speaking English? Are they feeling more confident in the skills that they've learned? You can also look at the quantitative side, which we provide a lot of detail on. You can actually see the numerical growth in the reports. And then if you're using external assessments, you'll also be able to see the growth um, there. So start with the plan. Uh, you know, we provide you with the guidance on this uh, in the follow-up training, and it really helps when you set this up, you know, get the students, uh, have a launch date, track and monitor their progress, and then evaluate at the end. One of the things we cover in that initial training is we talk about deployment models. 
So the vast majority of you already have a very clear idea of how you would like to utilize learning upgrade, how you would like to use the learning management system. The fantastic thing is we work with so many programs in different parts of the United States, different parts of the world. And a lot of them, you know, they'll have like a specific use case. But what we find is they have, you know, let's let's do blended, for example. Most of our programs come to us and they say, okay, you know, I have in-class instruction. I'd like to use Learning Upgrade as a supplemental tool. And then when they start to hear about the other deployment models and how other programs are using it, it gives them ideas. And they say, you know what? Actually, I would love to utilize your WhatsApp learning circles. You know, that's something I know my students are using WhatsApp. I know they're communicating on WhatsApp. And I'd like to find additional ways for them to get in touch with each other, discuss lessons that we're working on, discuss learning upgrade, help other people get started with the program. Um, you know, talk to me about that. So here I'll just briefly kind of go through. So we saw with Sweetwater Adult Ed in the video, that's our traditional blended learning. So we have our traditional adult ed, we have an instructor, um, students are coming into either a physical classroom or in some cases a virtual classroom. And then learning upgrade is a tool for supplemental support. They're getting additional work. Um, they get a chance to kind of amplify what the instructor is doing. And this is probably our most powerful model. When we look at students who have the most success, the quickest success, you know, that tends to be the model that works really well. But it's not possible in every case. You know, there are programs that don't have the teachers, don't have the classrooms. There are a lot of students that don't have the scheduling time to make it to classrooms. They don't have the transportation. Maybe they don't have the funds um, to pay. And so it's really nice to have the, uh, these additional pathways for students to access the programs. So some will be fully remote. We work really well here, you know, and this is for this is going to be for deployments where students are working on their own time and they never attend a physical location. We have tutor based. So this is mostly with our libraries and literacy centers. And so here tutors are paired with individuals or maybe they conduct some group sessions. Tutors have not come back in the numbers that we saw before COVID. So a lot have very long waiting lists. They're having a difficult time uh, recruiting tutors and having tutors uh, available to the learners. So in these cases, if you have 300 students on your waiting list, put all of them on learning upgrade. They'll work for a few months. You'll get granular reports and see exactly where the students are. And that way, when they get paired with a tutor, the tutor wastes no time. They know exactly where to spend um, their intervention sessions. So that's the first benefit. The second benefit is a lot of the time students get paired with a tutor and then don't show up or they wash out. And what the programs find is students that have dedicated 15 to 20 hours to learning upgrade stick with the tutor. You know, once you've shown that you're dedicated to learning, um, they get to move to the front of the, the waiting list and they get paired and it's been very successful. Now, 2Gen, we work with a lot of adults. Then we find individuals in the house, you know, kids, family, friends, uh, people in the community, see how well it's working see how quickly it's working and they want access. So what we don't want for reporting purposes is 10 people using the same account. Let us know and we can provide access for additional licenses for everyone else. We find that that uh, you know communities that are learning together uh, are very successful. There's a little bit of competition. There's a whole lot of support and there's a whole lot of camaraderie. So we really wanna support the two gen learning. The nice thing with learning upgrade is one device can work for a lot of people. So even if you only have one device in the household, everybody gets their own set of credentials. I log in for 30 minutes, I log out, the next person uses the same device and they're able to log in and you're able to track and monitor all of that progress as if they had different devices. Learning circles we've touched on, this is probably the most powerful just because it provides that sense of community in places where they might not have it. Um, if they don't have a classroom to meet, to do that on WhatsApp, to be able to communicate, share their journey. We can provide you with a, a folder of prompts. So here are some learning upgrade poems or paragraphs that we'd like you to read. If you're in basic or one, respond in your first language. As you move up to English upgrade four, five, and six, we're gonna start having you respond to the prompts in English. And then self-service is the last one. We find this with libraries, very limited uh, with staff. And so I can't hire anybody. I don't have anybody to manage this program. It's kind of like a book at the library. My goal is to get you to check it out. What you do with it at that point is not really my concern. So if you do have a program like that, you want to make Learning Upgrade accessible, have it available on your website, but you don't have the staff or the bandwidth to track and monitor progress, that's okay too. Let it be self-service 
and the students can track and monitor um, themselves. Final thing we'll cover again is it's free to start and affordable to grow. So your journey to Forex growth begins here. Um, we're giving you a full quarter of free access for the students that are working on track. Um, that can be upwards of 10 CASAS points for free in that quarter. So I really encourage you to get started, provide access, um, fill out the form that we've placed in the chat. If you're not seeing it in the chat, you can always go to our website, learningupgrade.com and click on the uh, request pilot, fill that out. The key is select that you're a member of COABE. Uh, we have an organization uh, checklist. And so just select that you're from COABE and that'll give you the completely unlocked full access um, quarterly pilot and you'll be able to get started. Finally, you know, we'll just cover the pilot timeline. You'll get started here in February. For those of you that are attending the in-person conference in Nashville, you know, we'll be there. Um, our partners in Adult Ed are New Readers Press. So I'll be at the booth there on multiple days. We'll also be hosting three sessions on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So if you'd like to learn about our other courses, uh, I'd love for you to come by and see us there. And then we'll also, you know, if you're getting started with the pilot today, you know, keep working through March, April until the evaluation. And then we'll start setting plans for the school year 24-25. As we move through the summer and fall, um, we'll help you track and monitor your students and set up a powerful plan to ensure their learning journeys continue. So with that, that's everything. Um, Bethel is going to place a poll. Um, so feel free to fill that out. Um, and you can, uh, you know, answer some questions on the webinar. Uh, once you do that, you know, please fill out that pilot form. Um, if you'd like to contact us, uh, just info at learningupgrade.com. You can ask us any questions that you have, and we'd be more than happy to answer those and get you started with your pilot. Uh, thank you so much for attending. Have a great week. And uh, for those of you that will be attending uh, the conference in Nashville, I would love to hear from you and see you. Uh, see you soon. Bye.